Hello everybody, welcome back to the stream. Today we are actually going to give you guys an understanding of chess and Elder Scrolls Online. This is the best and quickest way to get a bang for your buck. And then you just grab some gear in the process as well. So, how can I make the most out of my farming route? Well, simple, you add chess locations. The best way is to add those chess locations while you're farming for any kind of thing that you want to do. Like, for example, some people want to farm, um, like, rubidite or wood, or flowers, or all kinds of things. There's definitely places where you can do that in the game and add chess locations to your route. Now, what what is hot will definitely make the most out of those farming routes that you're gonna get. For example, Mother Sorrow is a really hot set in Deshaun and optimizing a chess route in that area will get you the highest possible amount to get not only just you know f basically free gear and some um of the how do i say this like just all kinds of materials that are in that area so you want to make sure that you keep up to date with what is hot not only in pve but pvp as well and what are people buying? You can also look at your purchase tab history and uh, in your guild traders and see like what has been selling for a really good and high price. Now, this is the chess criteria. Obviously, there's simple chess, which is gonna give you green gear, sometimes name gear. It really depends. I've gotten some really good stuff out of simple chess before, so don't necessarily sleep on these chests those chests sometimes can give you the best thing in the world this beachfront verbo is about to become part of an so. vacation memory. now the intermediate chests will have name gear green or blue so you have a chance to get green gear um out of an intermediate chest but uh you also have a chance to get blue gear as well now, in Advanced or Master Chess, you have a chance to get blue gear or purple gear. Now, if it's a Master Chess and you have all your CP allocations correctly, you're most likely going to get either two purple or a purple and a blue. The next step is you got to figure out where your traders are. Like, how many traders you have, where are they located each, each week, what can you sell in those traders? What's worth breaking down or keeping? For example, I don't think blue jewelry, like I only have two traders every week. Um, so that's 60 slots every week that I have to make the best out of it. Now, what you can do is you can figure out what is worth breaking down and what is worth selling. For example, if I have purple rings, obviously I'm gonna sell those. But if I have blue rings, it depends. They have to be like 8K or more for me to even consider selling them. If you have a purple ring that is worth 1500 gold, you might as well just decon that. Make sure you have the passives to get the circon grains out of it. And then just collect enough of those and just sell the circon plating in itself. Same with the blue and green jewelry. Now, another thing is for the gear itself, if you have like purple gear that is not necessarily the best trait you can say well it depends on you know what I need but uh, if you need it for your sticker book and it's not worth that much go ahead and learn it go ahead and decon it learn it do whatever you want with it purple gear tends to sell um, a little bit better in PC and PlayStation and Xbox now gold gear will sell very well in PC but not necessarily in console I don't know why that is but that's just the thing so if you have the gold mats to upgrade sometimes you have a better chance to get that nice divine Sasha mother sorrow to just get so much more value out of it because you're gonna get not only your mats um, amount for it so let's say go X is 15k you're gonna take a draw wax. You're gonna get that amount on top of that of what the purple Sasha Mother Sorrow is worth. Plus, you can tack in an extra 25 to 50k on top of the mat cost 
and the actual gear. So just think about that. Make sure you have all your points into where you can actually upgrade. Now, what can you sell? It depends on where you are. The best cities are obviously Mournhold, Capital, Sralka, Vivek, Rimen, Eleanor. Just make sure you have at least one of your traders in those cities. It's very important. Now, what you can do is, depending on how many traders you have, you can actually go crazy or don't go too crazy on it. So what you can do is, you can actually say, oh, I have a trader, more hold. Let me get these little items in, you know, the trader, more hold. And then let me um, basically sell everything else in the trader that's in that wild refuge. Now, remember, the worse the trader is, the worse your return is going to be. You can get top dollar in big cities. But if you're in a refuge or just a random trader in the wild, you're not going to get the best bank for your buck. So invest in your guild traders. They're actually worth it and they will save you money in the long run. However, I do sympathize with the ones that say, well, I really like the social guild. They do have a guild trader every week and they're in a refuge or just random out there in the middle of nowhere. That's fine. There's other things you can sell. Um, you're going to get treasure maps. You're going to get just random paintings. You can sell those there. It's very cheap. If you get them and kind of undercut the market by like 100 or 200 gold on those, you're going to be able to get your bank for your buck. Especially on PC where you have Tamriel Trade Center, which will make it so much better for people to actually look at what you have and if they're wanting that piece of item they're gonna come get it on console it's a little bit weirder and different you're gonna have to undercut more than one or two hundred gold this is just because not many people shop out Wells refuge so the best way that you can get the bank for your buck is try to list in those traders as close to after trader flip as possible trader flips happen on Tuesday at 2 or 3 p.m eastern right now and then when it's fall back it's 2 p.m eastern when it's um spring forward obviously then it's 3 p.m eastern now what you can do is try to list everything in that trader that you can at those spots because if you don't oh it's gonna be bad so just make sure you have that in in the thing now how do i do this simple just get out there get a farm route make sure you have harvest pin and the map out on and just do it just do it what if i'm on console well that's fine too one of the greatest things that i've seen happen is when vardenfell came out my husband actually took out a map of vardenfell and then as soon as he came out he went and discovered some chests, made a route, put those chests in the map, and then just figured out a route. Now that's a lot of work for what you can do on PC for basically nothing, but obviously console players are a little bit handicapped in that area. So just make sure that you, you can even print a map of somebody on PC and just figure out a route that will work for you. Now, a lot of times, you have to kind of figure out where the developers are going to be putting this stuff. So, just kind of anticipate that. And that is all for the day. Thank you for watching. And I do hope that this helps you in the most. If you have any more questions, comments, or concerns, just check out our YouTube channel, Cougar Town Gaming.